Um, inside the mansion, not only is the royal banquet table to the right, but you go upstairs to um, a, like a royal suite that's up there. And the royal suite in and of itself is, is gorgeous. A lot of royal uh, blue velvet and gold. But beyond that is another set of stairs that goes up to vats. My guest, Dr. Candace Smitherman, made a full commitment to the Messiah, and you would too, if you had had an encounter like she had. Uh, what was wrong with you physically? I um, had Crohn's disease and severe anxiety, depression, a spirit of fear. Is, is there a cure for Crohn's disease? No, it is an incurable disease. Uh, so. <laughs> What happened? Well, um, I obviously this disease had consumed me for most of my life, and I was full of fear, anxiety, and depression. I just walked in it. And um, I was in Hawaii. My husband uh, was called to go away on a six-month deployment. And while he was gone, I really started to feel just um, intense grief and depression. The grief came uh, as a result of the fact that when my father died, when I was nine years old, I never grieved his death. And so here when my, when my husband left, I started to begin manifesting um, what I had packed down for many, many years. Although I didn't realize that at the time, but I went to the doctors and they wanted to put me on anxiety and depression medication and um, I just, I didn't go in that direction. So um, my husband calls me and tells me that I'm gonna have to attend a funeral because one of the men in his squadron had passed away. And I was like, I, I can't go to the funeral. I've been to a funeral since my father died when I was nine. And my husband said, you need to go and you need to support the family. So the night before the funeral, I prayed this rather um, lack of faith, uh, prideful prayer. And I said, Lord, if you're there and you can hear me, I can't get myself out of this one. And I can't get myself out of this one. It wasn't just the funeral part. It was like, I can't get me out of this box of anxiety and depression and sickness. I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning and I was looking for my pain. You know, when you're grieving or when you're depressed, you're expecting it the minute of consciousness that you would have it. I didn't have it. I was like touching myself. I was like, oh my gosh, I have this joy. So I went to the funeral and my friend said, oh my gosh, you know, what happened to you? And I said, I don't know. This is the last prayer that I prayed. And immediately a touch from God, all of that, and also understanding the word. Tell me about the portal, the gateways. Uh, in fact, I have a quote from your book. You, speaking of us, are now a heavenly being in an earth suit. Uh, explain. Yes, yes. I think it's really important for people to understand this, Sid, that when we become born again, we immediately enter into eternity. You don't have to wait until you die to be in eternity. We are in eternity right now, every moment of time. And so we need to learn to operate as eternal beings in the here and now. When we begin to do that and activate uh, that understanding, that knowledge and understanding, and activate uh, the spiritual um, uh, faith, knowing that we are eternal beings, we'll begin to start to see the miracles of heaven manifest in the earth. Everything uh, that is founded on healing and miracles is all about faith. And so God will meet us where we're at. If we believe we're eternal beings, he will treat us as such, and then we'll begin to see the responses of being eternal. Now, God's really gifted you. You're a seer. Mm -hmm. That means she can see in the invisible world. You explain, and, and I'm, I'm beginning to see, I like the word you use for angels, waiters. Yeah. But there's a lot of unemployed waiters. What are they waiting for? These waiters that we have are not unemployed. They are on the heavenly payroll. And uh, they are consistently waiting for the command of the Word of God. And just as, as waiters do when we sit at a table with our family and go out to dinner, and when you finish with your meal or you need more of a drink, they, they usher over. Well, these angels that God has assigned to us for the purposes of the kingdom will do the same thing. They respond to his word. And so it's not so much, uh, this is not some kind of strange and arbitrary thing. We all have the word on the inside of us, or you can read the word. It's right in front of you. And so all you must do is speak that word, and they begin to come forward and start to operate with you in the speaking of the word. 
Is that why so many are grabbing hold of the revelation now of proclaiming and declaring God's promises and confessing them out loud? Is that what goes on? Your waiter no longer is unemployed? <laughs> I would say yes, but you know what? I think we've been taught for you know years by just ama amazing pastors and leaders. You know, speak the word of God, change will happen, and that is 100% truth. But we don't have a lot of teaching on the fact that angels hearken to the voice of the Lord, and the voice of the Lord is His word. And so it's twofold. We're called to speak the word to transform our souls and transform our environments, but also the angels are waiting to join us in the Word. So it's a, it's another understanding right there. It's been in there from day one that, you know, God has sent us the angels and they hearken to the voice of Jesus. They responded to Him. We're eternal just like He is. Plus, He bought for us our salvation. So, so much more shall we have them come alongside us because He's seated with the Father and the Lord wants us to have that kind of protection, encouragement, and love from heaven. Now, Candace visited heaven, and it so radically changed her life. When she tells this experience and prays for you, I tell you, it's going to radically change your life, too. Want to hear? Hello, YouTube. Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. When I heard this story, I said to Dr. Candace, I want you to explain it. What that going to heaven was like, what it did for you. Would you do that now? Yes. You know, it was a, a radical um, uh, visual that God gave me of the royal table. And uh, when he took me into that place, um, and I, I was literally... You know, what, what, what is the royal table? Yes, the royal table. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6 says that he will, uh, we will be seated at a banquet table full of uh, wines, and it will be a great feast that we will have in the end times. And so, um, but that table, okay, is in existence today. He sits at that table. And um, yes, there's the great cloud of witnesses is there and there's angels at this great banquet table. So the feast is going on. There'll be another great one when we are all uh, with him together. But, but nonetheless, there is a seat in the here and now that you have that has your name on it, a gold plate with your name on it, gold silverware right before you, golden chalices, um, fruit. Um, there's, a, there's bread in front of you that is the revelation bread, the bread of life, the bread of heaven right in front of you. There is um, uh, just uh, oil. There's, there's oil in the lampstands, all of these lampstands, but there's oil on the table that you can actually you know, dip the bread in or dip your fingers in. Um, the angels come and they bring uh, what we need, but the most beautiful part is not, not the food and not not the gold. It's that he sits there with us and he communes with us. And is he, when he laughs, the glory just comes forth and you're just overwhelmed. And we have no consciousness of ourself. We only have consciousness of Him. So as humans, we have so much consciousness of our humanity and sin in humanity. You know, always concerned about our weaknesses or, you know, what, what do we look like? You know, all of these things. None of that. It is all Him. And He comes and He sits down. He pulls up chairs and sits down next to people and just begins to talk with them. And there's, it's so much love and total peace. It, it's truly amazing. And I have that image burned in my mind so I can go there whenever I want to, in any moment. And what about the vats? Oh, the vats are amazing. Um, inside the mansion, not only is the royal banquet table to the right, but you go upstairs to um, a, like a royal suite that's up there. And the royal suite in and of itself is, is gorgeous. A lot of royal a blue velvet and gold. But beyond that is another set of stairs that goes up to vats. They're heavenly vats from Hosea chapter 2. And in those vats is wine, 
oil, grain, gold, silver, water, wool, flax, the commodities, the commodities that we need to operate on the earth. Everything that we touch, Sid, this table, chairs, everything, it was first made in heaven and then it was given to us as thoughts and ideas that we brought forth into the earth realm. So everything in these vats is available to us today in accordance with the word, Hosea chapter 2. We when the, um, when the uh, nation of Israel repented, well, those things were taken away from them, but when the nation of Israel repented, God gave back all of those things. And the word says that Jezreel, who is him, God sows, is sowing those things back into the earth. And so it is available to us. We climb up the stairs in the spirit, grab the gold you need, grab the bread you need, the revelation, grab the wine you need, which is new opportunities, and grab that anointing oil. And anything else you need, and you can go in for your friends and family too. Help me out. I'm, I'm more of a feeling person than a seer, and I, and I feel the presence of God on most guests, yes. but I'm feeling something beyond the normal anointing. Do you know what I'm feeling? You know, Sid, I, I, I believe it's the glory of God. It's the, it's the kabod, it's the heaviness of the Lord. And um, when, I, when I speak on these scriptures, God makes this very tangible for people. It truly is um, something He wants people to grab a hold of. Um, you know, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says that. But when um, someone's been to these places, it becomes a part of their being. So it's a part of uh, my DNA, and it's a part of um, who I am now. I, I can never be who I was before because I've been there with Him, and I didn't want to come back. Well, what is it going to do? Well, first, number one, that's wonderful that you yes. had that encounter. Yes. It's wonderful for her. Yes. But what about me? What yes. about you? Yes. Yes. Well, see, when God sent, when God told me to come back, okay, this was this this trip to the royal banquet table was later trips that I took. You'll read in the book about how I was caught up to heaven. And the Lord said to me, He said, I, I, you can't stay here with me. You have to go back. I told him, I said, I love my husband and my children, but I don't want to go back. And he said, you have to go back because I need you to tell people what you've experienced. But at that time, I hadn't even yet experienced the royal banquet table or the fire angels or even begin to see angels. All of that came later in my walk. For everyone, it's purity of heart. You just have to have an authentic heart before God and say, Lord, I love you and I want to be with you now. I don't want to wait until my body is in the ground and my spirit and soul go to heaven. I want you now. And He will answer that. And I believe, Sid, He's answering that more and more now all over the world in so many different ways. But He wants His people to be set up for His return. Now, if you were, if you were Jesus and you were coming back, wouldn't you want your people to have a taste of where they were going so that they could prepare themselves, so that they could be ready, so that they could be hungry, so that they could get their lives in order, so that they could begin to have a pure heart before you and, and learn to speak to you right and learn to um, be a royal citizen because I'm coming back and I'm royalty, he says, and I want to sit at the table with royal citizens. I don't want to sit with a, a group of uh, people that I've saved, redeemed, healed, and resurrected, and they still act like nothing was ever done for them. He's like, I want them to come back and be with them at the level that you and I are, how we're talking here. He wants to, he's, he's right here, right with us right now. And, and in the heavenly realms, I see us talking right across the table and he's right here. He's so real. And so with this real dialogue, he just wants us to tell everybody it's for them too. You heard that, it's for you too. When we return, Candace is going to pray for you to experience heaven on earth all the time. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! 
Call now and get Candace Smitherman's powerful brand new book, Releasing Heaven, and her anointed two-part audio masterclass, Angels on Assignment, and her bonus audio teaching, Living in Heaven on Earth. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9679. Through Candace's powerful brand new book, Releasing Heaven, you will discover your identity in Jesus and cultivate a heavenly mindset. Learn how to access the authority you have received from Jesus. Understand how to enter the supernatural realm as a citizen of heaven and immediately release the power of heaven into your everyday circumstances. Be empowered to begin to release miracles by praying from being seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Candace includes powerful decrees and declarations for you to receive Receive all God's promises and blessings for your life. Activate your ability to see and experience the presence of assisting angels. You will also receive her two-part audio masterclass, Angels on Assignment. You will learn how to sense the presence of angels even if you can't see them. Learn how to activate the angelic realm in your life. Discover how God will use dreams to reveal what is going on in the spirit realm. Candace includes powerful prayers for your eyes to be open to see into the spirit realm. And Access all of the promises and blessings that God has for you. Plus, you will receive Candice's bonus audio teaching, Living in Heaven on Earth. Understand the importance of living a lifestyle of repentance. Find out how to walk in your authority to rule over the demonic. Candice walks you to the heavenly banqueting table so you can experience your being seated in heavenly places with Jesus. Receive a powerful impartation of peace and joy and overcome every fear and the attacks of the enemy. Don't miss out on getting Candace Smitherman's powerful brand new book, Releasing Heaven, and her anointed two-part audio masterclass, Angels on Assignment, and her bonus audio teaching, Living in Heaven on Earth. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9679. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9679 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, Candace, what are blessing blockers? Blessing blockers are things that come to steal our joy or our heavenly experience. Heaven is supposed to be available to you every day. It is in your faith and in the word that you carry in your heart. So whatever is coming to distract, distort, discourage, bring fear, anxiety, depression, is all come to deter you from the seat that the Lord has already given you. He wants us to be walking in this fullness and abundance and, and the confidence of knowing that we're seated with Him all the time. And so, so blessing blockers would be those things that we might think about that um, would distract us from the moment with Him or that the enemy would deposit a seed into us from past things that happened that would cause us to look at that thing and massage it or talk to it just a little bit. No, at the royal table, there is no distraction. Okay, now imagine if you're seated at the royal table, but you've got your cell phone and your cell phone is ringing. You're at the royal table. You're not going to answer your no. cell phone. No, you are going to be very focused on where you are at and who you are with. You would not answer that thing. You would not even want to be excused to go to the restroom because the moment is so intense. That's how we should be living our lives every day. And anything that interrupts that, we need to take authority over it and say, no, you, you do not deserve to be here. I will not look at you. I will not talk to you. I will not think about you. And they began to speak the word again, began to praise the Lord, praising him in all situations in every moment. Why? Why can we? Because he's so good that he's fixing it. He's already fixing it. When we, um, uh, because of humanity and the fall of man and being separated from God, we developed habits and patterns of those people that were cast away. But the fact is we are no longer cast away. We are united with him. And our new seat means we have to reframe our thinking. Candace, look into the camera and you pray for heaven on earth for those that 
are hungry and thirsty for more, like me, like you. Amen. I'm going to pray for you. I just believe right now that um, angels are visiting you in your room. They're meeting you right where you're at. No matter fear or anxiety or depression or sickness uh, that has consumed your life in any way, any distractors or anything that has come in to pull you away from where you are seated with Christ. We are going to bind those forces right now in the name of Jesus. You have no authority because you are seated with him in heavenly places. Father, I thank you right now, Lord. I thank you that as we close our eyes in this moment, that everyone close your eyes. I thank you, Father, that we are walking into the royal palace. It is full of gold. And as we come in, we are escorted to the right and we are given a seat. An angel escorts us to a seat. The seat has our name on it. As we go to sit down, we look at the plate, the plate, turn it over. It has your name on it. Touch the gold utensils. Look at the bread before you. See all of the bounty that God has. Now look to your left or to your right. Depends on where you're seated. If you're seated on the left side of the banquet table, he is to your left. If you're on the right side of the banquet table, he's to your right. He's seated there. He's in a white robe. He has a gold crown with jewels. He's got a gold chalice in his hand. He has gold rings. He's full of glory. He's laughing and full of joy. Your seat is there not because you earned it, but because he invited you to be there. Because he paid the price. You've been seated in this place with him. Do not get up. Just receive. Stay in that place right now. Let him minister to you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. He's healing people right now. There's people with digestive problems that he's healing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Knees, I see people, their knees are being healed. I don't know if you've had a prior surgery on your knees. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Feet, feet that are crippled up are beginning to open in the name of Jesus. For those of you that want your experiential knowledge of God, and that's the game changer, Say this prayer out loud with me and believe it to the best of your ability. Dear God, Dear God I'm, a sinner, I'm a sinner for which I am so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus has washed away my sins and I am clean. And now that I am clean, I boldly proclaim, I boldly proclaim. You, are my Lord, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. You are my Savior. Before you say amen, if you have a pain in your neck or your back or your head, you are healed in Jesus' name. Mm.